started praying when he called our text. I said, Lord, you got to touch him. But before I open, just FYI, I was in Acts 16 yesterday too, except it was titled Preach, Prayer, and Praise. Whatever you're standing on will put you in the situation you're in, but it's the same thing that'll get you out of the situation with prayer and praise. And I thought, whoa. And then I went to grace. Grace always lines up with God's word. That's not what I'm going to talk about tonight. <coughs> that was free. But we've heard about worry to warrior. And we've heard about the power of prayer. But are we following the shepherd? Where are we with following the shepherd? Father God, as we come before you with the word tonight, I pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts, open our minds, open our hearts to receive your word. Let your anointing and your Holy Spirit be upon your people, Lord, that we could receive what you have for us. Father, that we would be in what you would have us be. Lord, that we would follow you and be willing, Lord, to do what you've called us to do as we pray according to your word, your will, and your purpose in each life. In Jesus' name, amen. And obviously, I'm going to be in Psalm 123. But one of the things I want to remind you about, Psalm 37, 4, says to delight yourself in the Lord, and you can have the desires of your heart. Do you know what delight means to God? Delight means that we take pleasure in him, that we keep our mind on him. We're satisfied with what God can do. We're satisfied with what he's doing in our lives. But are we really satisfied? Then we go to Matthew 33, verse, or chapter, uh, verse, chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You know what we do? We put all these things added unto us when we seek his kingdom. We turn it around. When I was over in Israel, I watched some shepherds on a hill. There, was two, there were two flocks. And that shepherd would stand in the middle of the flock. And then those sheep would see how close they could get to him. They'd be pushing and they'd be rooting and they'd be running. They wanted to get to the shepherd. Why? Because they knew he had something good for them. When's the last time you rooted to get close to your shepherd? When's the last time you sacrificed and prayed to get close to your shepherd? Because he's got the plan. And we get all mixed up. You see, David knew about the shepherd. And I'm not going to read 20, Psalm 23. I'm going to read it as I go. But he knew that God would protect him from danger because he'd already proven himself with the bear and the lion. He knew that he'd find good pasture because his sheep were good and they followed where he went and they were always fed. He knew that he could bring them beside the still waters and they get as much nourishment and, and, and thirst settled as they needed. And he knew that he would keep them from straying. One of the things I noticed about those shepherds and those sheep there wasn't any standing out waiting for him to call them. When the shepherd raised that staff, I don't know how they know, but they know. And they come running. What happens when Jesus raises his staff to you? Do we come running? Or do we say, oh, God, I'll get to that tomorrow. Lord, I'll do that. Those four men that he was talking about didn't start praying when they climbed that ladder. I can guarantee it. Their faith was already anchored. Their belief was already settled. And they had already decided. What happens when somebody comes to you and says, will you pray for me? You cannot look at them and say, well, wait a minute. I got to get prayed up first. Let me pray for me first. No. You should have done that every day. Every time you're in your house, every time you leave your house, you need to be paid up and prayed up. I thought about that at the remnant. I met a lady coming in as I was going out. And she looked at me and she said, I don't know your name, but I know you pray. 
here's my name and pray for me. And I said, well, we can pray right now if you want to. She said, I don't have time, but I know you pray. You know why she knows I pray? Because she heard me on the TV 15 years ago. I'm here to tell you when you get a reputation of being just like pastor, honey, he wasn't on that bus just to make money. God, God, he wasn't happy there. I'll give him that. But he, God didn't put him there just to make and take care of his needs. God put him there as a mission field. I don't know where you were at. But I do know whatever you're doing, if you are substituting schools, if you're working at a retail, if you're working in a nursing home, if you're working in a bank, I don't care what you're doing. We are to be anchored and we are to be following the shepherd. But we have a tough time doing that. Exactly. You, you're, mis- you're never out of your mission field. I learned that the hard way. You never leave your mission field. Once you belong to Jesus, and once you're anchored in him, you never leave it. You may get tired and you may get weary, but you're not going to leave it. Because David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He claimed him, I shall not want. Underline that word not and underline that word want. You see, when you get settled to the desires of your heart and they're in Christ, your wants change. It's not about what Lorley wants. It's not about what's going to happen in Lorley's life. It's about what God wants. Now, do we always like that? You think Paul and Silas like being in prison? But you know what they did? They sang a song at midnight. How many of you in your dark time praise and sing a song at midnight? And that was before the earthquake. That was before they were delivered. They started singing praises. Do you sing praises? Or are you sometimes like me and go, oh, God, what are you doing and why am I here? Do we do that? We do. But when we learn to sing praises, I love that song, I sing praises to your name. And I also love that song, it's me again, Lord. I got a prayer that needs an answer. I got a problem I can't solve. So here I am on bended knee. We need to learn that when we sing praises to the Lord, he hears us and he's got a plan. But you know what? We start looking like this. God, it's so dark here. Are you sure this is where I'm supposed to be? God, are you sure this is one? Oh, I got to oh, hurry because I told him I'd do a devotional. Whew. Okay, I'll be good. But anyway, are we sure that we want what God wants? Because he's, you understand, we don't, we don't want for nourishment. We don't want for spiritual nourishment, people. We've got a, a book that we can eat. The Bible says taste and see if it's good. And we got a preacher that preaches us on fire. I'm here to tell you, somebody asked me, asked Tanya, they said, is your mother that one that wears that hat that's on on YouTube? And And Tanya had to say yes. She said, you know, that preacher is on fire. And Tanya said, I know. And then they looked at her and said, so is your mother. And Tanya said, I know, just, I get the sermons, it's okay. Let me tell you people, God's moving. And he's moving outside these walls. And he sees you come and go. He knows who he can trust. It says, I shall not want for refreshment, because he leads me beside still waters. There is nothing any better than an ice cold spring. Nothing feels any better. Nothing tastes any better because he refreshes us. The word of God is refreshing. And, you know, I I don't mean to burst your bubble, but I got to tell you, there's not a one of you going through anything that somebody else ain't been through. And there's not a one of you going through anything that somebody else won't be going through. Aggravation with youngins, been there, done that. Losing everything, been there, done that. Standing alone, been there, done that. Everybody's done that. It's not unique to you. But you know what happens to us? Paul and Silas weren't the first ones to be thrown in prison. 
They weren't the first ones that were whipped because they preached the gospel. But what did they do? Did they focus on poor little me? No, they started singing praises. I used to sing a song, give me a song to sing at midnight. And my sister told me one time, she said, we can tell what you're going through, but what song you're singing. <laughs> Lord, there's going to be a bridge. I can get across this. <laughs> Give me a song to sing at midnight. You see, we need that refreshment, that still waters. Thank God he doesn't keep us there. But you know what? You wouldn't survive on the mountaintop. In the valley, he restores my soul. He leads me beside those still waters. He keeps me in that valley. And that's where I grow. We don't pray unless we're in crises. Whether you believe me or not, we don't. When everything's going good and everybody's in the house and everybody's behaving, we're not praying. We're, we're, we're mouthing it. But he said something tonight that hit me. God, he said, God saw the faith in the heart of those men. And then he heard the faith come out of their mouth. Sometimes faith comes out of our mouth and it's not in our heart. Because we think that's what we need to say. And that's what happens. Our heart begins to shrivel up because it doesn't have any moisture in it. Moisture from the word of God. They can tell you when you go to the doctor, you better get hydrated. They tell you all the time, drink water, yada, yada, yada. Okay? It's the same way with your heart. If you don't feed it scripture, it'll dry up. It needs to be hydrated on the word of God. Because... He restores my soul. I shall not want for strength. I can walk through any valley, any valley, as long as I know God's walking with me. As long as I know he's there in that valley and he's brought me down. I used to sing a song, this valley was, is made for me. This, there's been a lot of valleys that were made for me. They were not different from anybody else's. They were the ones God called me to. That God said, I'm going to do something for you here. And when you come up on the mountain and you look back down, you can see the reason for the valley. You can look back and know why God caused what he caused. And I'm here to tell you when he's not, he's not done. And when he gets done, I'm done. Oh, yeah, I volunteer a lot. <laughs> Lord, is it today? Can we go home today, God? Anybody else besides me doing that? Somebody, several people are because they talk to me about it. Can we just go home today, God? Can't you just take us all and go? God's not done. We got a job. And as long as there's breath in these bodies, he's called you. Now, whether you want to do it or not, it's up to you. But he's called you. You see, Jesus knows the responsibilities of the shepherd. He knows exactly in John 10, 11, he said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Think about what he did for you. We're getting ready to celebrate his birth that started him on a road that he knew would end on a cross, and yet he loved us enough to do it. He loved us enough to come. He said, my sheep know I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep. That's in John 10, 14. And am known of mine. Do you know him? Do you realize that he knows you? I just love it. I, I'm going to pick on Izzy and Michael. I can fool Izzy and Michael a lot because they don't know me a lot. But I can't fool the people that lived in my house that know me you see me here but what am I like when I'm at, out away from here and you don't see me am I still the same am I still known to be one of Jesus's sheep is he still known is he now is known by Miss, Mrs. Michael Malden bless her heart we'll pray <laughs> But my point being, and Mimi is known by Mrs. Matthew Malton. And when people see them, sometimes they'll remember their maiden names, but for the most part, they won't. 
as they get older in the Lord and as they get older in their marriage, I, it took me forever to remember Tina's maiden name. She was just, she's been Tina Molden ever since I've known her. So you see what happens? The sheep are known by the master, but the master needs to know the sheep needs to know who they are. He calls them by name and he leads them. He calls them by name and he leads them. Do you know that there's a song out now by Karen Peck and New River? My name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm telling you, when they start singing, doing that chorus, they start the drums like Michael and Matthew play it. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm not, I'm ready to shout. Because she says, nobody can take my name out of that book but me. Nobody can erase it but me. My name is his. And you see, the shepherd always goes before us. You're not going to walk anywhere that Jesus didn't already walk. You're not going to do anything. And we need to learn to follow him and know his voice. And I don't need to tell you when he's leading me, you can see it. You can see it in my attitude. You can see it in my worship. You can hear it in my testimony. You can hear about what God is doing if we will listen. He said he contrasted himself to the hireling, which pastor mentioned tonight. I could let you preach. I should give you my notes. But he said he, but in John 10, 12, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leave the sheep and flee. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. And that is exactly what's happening in the church world today. He is scattering the sheep. People think because they come and sit on a pew and even pay tithe, they think that's all that they need to go to heaven. It's not going to work that way. We've got a shepherd we need to follow. He fed, he gave, he led, and that's what he wants from us. But it's not to please flesh. We don't like when we can't please our flesh. I like it when I get a massage. It feels so good. But you know what? By the time I get home, take a nap, it's done. My body's aching again, and I'm right back to where I started. You see, he flees because he has no investment in those sheep. Those preachers flee because they got no investment in the sheep. They have no care at all. How many times do you think in the last 22 years that pastors thought about sitting down and saying, Lord, I'm running. And I show up again on Sunday, and he's here. Well, he didn't get very far, did he? You know what? We all feel like that sometimes. We all feel like throwing in the towel. How many times, choir, have you heard me say that? <laughs> I'm quitting. How many times, ladies of grace? But God's not done. And I'll say it. And then, the, well, somebody I know resigns every Wednesday night. But she comes back the next Wednesday ready to go again. I, that, our missionettes and our rangers, I think they all resign every Wednesday night. If what I'm watching is true. <laughs> but they show up the next Wednesday. They can't run too far. And that's what happens. <laughs> it does. It does. But you see, in our hour of crises, re religious theosity and filiosity will not save you. Religion's man's way. Relationship is God's. And relationship says, Lord, I've already walked where you're walking. I've already prepared. I said at the right hand of God to be an advocate for you. All you got to do is pray and call on me. But Lord, do I have to do it this way? Uh, yeah. How many of you spanked your children? Uh-huh. Why did we spank them? Was it because we wanted to? No, it was because <laughs> some more than others. We got, it was because we loved them and we had to. We had boundaries they had to stay in. And I'm telling you, right. when I, <laughs> that's why God puts boundaries and lets Jesus correct you, people. He's the shepherd. 
And he puts the boundaries. And God says, son, you, you got one over there trying to get out. You need to hem it in. And oh, he, he starts hemming. And we don't like it. Anybody besides me ever been hemmed in? Woo! Can't go front, can't go back, can't go sideways. Oh, Lord, do something. He hems us in. Why? Because he loves us. I didn't whip my children. When I was left with, because I didn't love them, I used a paddle because I did. And they knew the boundaries. <laughs> Sometimes they'd bring me the paddle. And just say, we know what's going to happen. I'll touch my toes. Let's get it over with. And we did. Why? Because they knew they'd done wrong. You know when you're outside the boundaries of God. You know when you've gone against the word of God. You know when you're being disobedient. And we don't give God a chance. And we don't let Jesus lead us. We don't press into the shepherd and let him lead us out. What we do, we turn into a warrior, Jan. Instead of a warrior. I love that message. Why? Because once we're in war, once you're in the service and ask one of the Malden boys, <clears throat> you're going to do what they say do or you're going to pay a price. One way or the other. I was married to a Marine and I was married to a guy in the Army. I can tell you stories about boot camp that absolutely shocked me. But they learned to obey. You don't break the rules. It should be the same way with us. When we break the rules of God, we should get corrected. But do we? And do we accept the correction or do we blame the pastor? <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. It's a, mine and Tina's best thing to say is, did you hear what the pastor said today? Did you listen to that sermon? And then I say that to somebody else too. Did you hear what? pastor preached about today are you sure you listened because sometimes we need to understand that he is and and john 10 29 says my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand you can blame anybody you want to blame for where you're at but nobody but you leaves jesus Nobody but you walks away. God doesn't move. And as far as I know, Jesus is still on the right hand of the Father. He fulfilled his job and he's still sitting there. He's not leaving any of us. But oh, we like to blame somebody. Oh, sister so-and-so said something I don't like. So what? Exactly. Or brother so-and-so didn't shake my hand. So? I almost never leave this side of the church. And it's just habit because I'm an old lady. I can get away with it. Now, bottom line, it's not about who in the flesh. It's about what in the spirit. It's about where my heart is. Because you see, in that hour of crisis, the good shepherd keeps his sheep. I can tell you, I can testify beyond the shadow of a doubt I've never walked through a valley that God wasn't right there with me. I didn't always understand it, and Lord knows I didn't like it. But he's always been right there. Lordy, I got a better plan for you. Even when I got fired twice, God had a better plan. I went to lunch one day to take my new administrative assistant with me for lunch. I came back, and I was handed a pink slip. And I'm thinking, God, I, I'm not sure what you're doing here. And God said, I got a better plan. I said, well, Lord, I don't think I want a better plan. God said, don't make a difference. I do. I looked back when I left Pro. God had prepared me all that time for where I am today. But you see, we don't see that. We get all hung up on how he's going to keep us. And then he's got the plan. Because you see... He's our guide. He leads me in paths of righteousness. I thought of that message you preached about the crossroads. How often do we stand at the crossroads? There's a song about that too, by the way. But how long? We make a choice. Do we choose to follow the crossroad of Jesus? Or do we choose to follow the crossroad we think looks good? 
we make a lot of our decisions on what we see and what we think is good. We even make a lot of our decisions on what sounds good. There's also a song out now that called, There's Good and There's Jesus. Good doesn't always equate to Jesus because good can lead you astray. Good can take you down a path you don't want to go. You see, we learn to trust in the Lord with all our heart. It's a heart thing. We want, I wish my heart were more stable. Anybody besides me wish they had a stable heart, a more stable heart? Because there's times when doubt creeps in. There's times when things happen and I don't like them. There's times when my, I, I, I do things and I think, Lord, why did I do that? Lord, why did I say that? Well, I can tell you why, because I hadn't been in communication with him like I should have. But you see, Romans 4.20 said, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. One of the best witnesses you can have is when you go through a trial, lift your hands and praise God. One of the best witnesses. Now, does that mean everything's going to turn out the way you want it? Absolutely not. Oh, have, has, has anybody besides me ever said, oh, if only I was God? <laughs> I try and be good, no. Because there's times we want to change things. And if I was God, I'd make it different. But you see, God sees down the road and around the corner, Jim Martin. And he knows what's going to happen. And we don't like it when we hear those things that are not what we want. But it's for his name's sake that I walk. And then we get to the valley of the shadow of death. And where we believe it or not, God's still leading. He's got a timetable for every one of us. I, I never thought I'd get to the sunset side of my life, but I have. And I don't know when that sun's going to go down, but I do know it's just a doorway. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to, unless he comes back. I, that's the only way I can go. And honey, I want to be with him. When my feet hit that ground, it's not the loved ones I want to see, that, that gold street. It's Jesus. I want to be at the throne of Jesus. I'll get to the rest of them because I'm going to have a million and a half years. I have a long time to visit. And I can talk as much as I want to, by the way. Okay. But you see, we ask, why do people see death as defeat? And why do they lie when somebody dies? You know what? There isn't, according to the people, I only know two that have ever admitted that their loved ones are in hell. All the rest of them went to heaven. And I'm looking at them and I'm going, okay. And then I ask my favorite question. What scripture are you based that on? Because in John, the prayer he hears is a sinner's prayer. And I know it's hard. I know it is. But we've had every opportunity. Jesus didn't reject them. They rejected him. He didn't send them anywhere. They went willingly. Had this conversation with my oldest brother. It's okay. Your choice is your choice. You can do what you want to do. But as for me and this house, my house right now, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to stand on his word. You see, that phrase, shadow of death, do you realize that light is necessary to cast a shadow? And do you realize that every valley has a promise? And every shadow has an end. Every one of them. And God has given us that. The light in that valley of the shadow of death is Jesus. If you've got him, if you know him, he, he's, he's always there. Because I will fear no evil. There's also a song out about faith and fear having a fight. It's with the, by the Isaacs. They wrestle. Does anybody besides me ever have a war in them with fear and faith? We hear things, we're told things, and fear rises up. And then it's, oh, God, increase my faith. Lord, let that mustard seed get just a little bit bigger. Let it grow just a little bit more. We won't understand it and we don't know it. 
But you see, we want proof of what he's doing rather than walking in faith. I can't see the inside of me. I was talking to Marcia tonight about when uh, they told me I had diabetes. Um, my feet on the bottom, I guess it was neuropathy. I don't know what it was, but they got numb. And I, I didn't have a lot of feeling. Well, I do now. I don't know what's going on, but I know that God's taking care of it. So whether I can walk or not, it's God taking care of it. And we need, to, we need to live in that. We need not have fear because 2 Timothy 1, 7, and you can probably all quote it. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. How many times do you used to do, well, I'll, I'll pick on me. I say a lot of times, I think I'm losing my mind. And the Lord checked me on that. He said, you're not going to lose your mind till I take it. Okay, I hear you. I have a sound mind. Now, my mind might not always make sense. And my mind might not always do what it needs to do. <laughs> but I still got a sound mind. I don't care. I still got a sound mind. Because he is with me. The Lord himself comes to escort us through life. That's why you're sitting here tonight. You need to be fed because you're going out into the world tomorrow. You're going to face those little demons. And I'm telling you, they are. The, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. He doesn't have to attack us. He just needs to pick at us. We get grouchy with one another. I used to tell Jim... When I would get in a mood, I'd say, honey, today you can't look right, talk right, smell right, do anything right. You better stay away from me because I'm out of sorts. We know when we're that way. And who do we, we, we attack the one that needs to see the witness of God most, you know, because the world don't care how grouchy you are. They really don't. You can just quarrel and carry on. But the people that are around you, I love Brian from the remnant. I don't even know his last name, but he and I have a good conversation every time he's there. We laugh, we talk. And he looked at me and he said, I don't think I remember your name. I said, oh, that's okay. Just remember Jesus. We're good. And I went do my thing. He went and left. You know, we just need to let the world know. And those people that you are working with, they need to know. Please don't be a closet Christian. Be a brave Christian. Let them know where you stand, that he is your shepherd and that you are seeking him. And they can quote the, oh, they can quote the 23rd Psalm. But we need to get to where we're living the 23rd Psalm. There's a whole lot of difference in quoting it and living it. Because it says in Acts 7, 59, and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. That's how I want to die. Lord, take me home. Receive me to you. Die with a smile on my face. Tanya said, you'll probably have the Bible in your hand. I said, I might. But if I do or don't, it doesn't make any difference because it's in my heart. It's in our heart. That's where it needs to be because he's there. Because he says, thou preparest a table before me. Joshua 10, 25. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for this shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. People, we don't fight against our enemies. God does. We just need to look at them and smile and say, Praise the Lord. Do you know Jesus? You want to make them mad? Ask them that question. When they're mad at you. Because they do get a little upset every once in a while. And then they tell me, anybody besides me ever been called goody two-shoes? Mm -hmm. You've ever been called a holy roller? They even called me that on the sales route. It was like, whoop, that holy roller's back. Oh, okay, that must be me. You know what? Our testimony is our word. And it's not about the people we like. It's harder with the people we don't like. It's not that we don't love them, but we don't like them. 
And sometimes that's tough. Sometimes that's hard because he anointeth my head with oil. Psalm 16, 5, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and my cup thou maintainest my lot. He anoints my head and he maintains me in the presence of my enemies. In the presence of those people that are talking about me. Because you see, it is joy that is indescribable and it's full of glory when your Christian life is anchored in Jesus. When your Christian life has been there, you put all your trust in him, you rejoice in him, they shout for joy. Before thou defendest them, let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. I'm, I'm not a quiet Christian. I prayed for years for the Lord to make me quiet. I don't think he succeeded. You know why? Do you know how good you feel when you shout for joy? Do you know how good it feels when you dance? If, if this were 20... 30 years ago, I'd dance the aisles. But when I get all this started in one direction, it's really tough to get it to stop. So I just bounce now. I don't get to shout very much. But my point being, that joy is there. It's in you. You can be heard in your voice. You, you, you get excited. I love it. when I, Sometimes I think he's going to fall off of this edge right here. But so far he hasn't. But I, I love it. I remember when he could walk the, the pews. It was great. He's getting older, too. We're all getting older. But you know what? The joy of the Lord has not diminished. It has not stopped. That joy is still there because he said that peace is his. That peace when you follow the shepherd. He said we could have life, and i got to wrap this up. He said we could have life more abundantly. That thief comes to steal. He don't want you to have peace, and he don't want you to have life abundant. And I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about joy and peace and health and wisdom and knowledge and, and a sound mind and a strength that will get you through whatever's coming, a strength that will take you into things that are more abundant than anything you've ever seen because According to David, goodness and mercy shall follow me. How long? All the days of my life. Lord willing, I'll be 78 next year, and he's followed me every step of the way. Surely goodness and mercy. Now, does it look like goodness to you? No, but it looks like goodness to him because he's molding. And he's putting together a strength that will get you through all this world's getting ready to throw at us. We better be following the shepherd because I'm here to tell you things are coming down to a point. And we better be willing to stand. We better know our source of supply. We better know who's taking care of us. We better know that the Holy Spirit can go where nobody else can. I'm here to tell you he goes all the way to Florida. He goes all the way to California. He goes all the way to Thailand. He goes wherever we ask him to go. But he's a gentleman. You better ask him because he won't force himself on anybody. But boy, can he make people miserable when you ask him. I love it. I just love it. Why? Because I'm interested in their soul. That decision has to be made. He went to prepare a mansion that where we, he was there, we could be also. That's part of goodness and mercy. That's part of keeping us where he would hell, ha, have us dwell and hold us in the house of the Lord forever. I've asked the worship team to do, I have decided to follow Jesus if y'all want to come. And when I say worship team, I mean all of you. Um, <laughs> You know me. Okay. But let me tell you something. It's a decision you make. You have to choose. I can't make Tanya or Chuck or Emily or Austin or any of them follow Lord or choose him. I can only make that decision for myself. 
And it's a decision that you need to make every day. I have decided this day to follow Jesus. I have decided this day that he's my shepherd. I have decided this day that I'm going to press into him and that I'm going to have a relationship with him and that he is going to lead me beside still waters in the bottom of the valley because he's going to restore my soul and he's going to make me what he wants me to be. Stand with me as we sing. we have a shepherd that leads and guides our every step the steps of a good man are ordered of the lord amen praise god I, and i think about the fact that as sheep you know we have the choice as to whether we're gonna follow the shepherd or not but you know the safest place that you can be is in the presence of the shepherd because there's provision there there's protection there he knows what's best for you he also sees what's down the road amen and sometimes, every once in a while, you might get a sheep that likes to go stray, likes to get away from the shepherd, likes to do its own thing. But you know what? When a sheep does that and leaves the fold, leaves the pack, it gets out on its own, it's vulnerable for attack from the enemy. It has nothing there to defend it. But thank God that Jesus, Jesus protects us and Jesus provides for us. And he leads us in the green pastures and places that we can eat spiritually. The Lord feeds us. Amen. Praise God. And so the best place to be is not running away from the shepherd, but running to the shepherd. Amen. You can sit down just for a second here, okay? I want to share something with you. Sister Laura Lee brought this to my attention. But as you know that... When we first bought our house, one of the things we prayed for is that we prayed for a fence. We wanted a fence because we had two children that were four years old and we had a, a newborn on the way. He, Matthew wasn't quite there yet coming, getting ready to come into this world. But, you know, we wanted that fence because we told our children now, you can play anywhere in this yard. But there are boundaries here, and those boundaries are to protect you. You stay in the yard. Now, there's a few times they tried to get out, and they got chastened because of it. But that fence, little did they know, was for their protection. God puts boundaries around us, not because he doesn't love us, but because he does love us. Because God's know, God knows what's best, and he wants to protect us. Glory to God. And sometimes we're trying to figure ways out to get outside those boundaries because we want to do our own thing. But when we do our own thing, we get ourselves in trouble. And we get ourselves in trouble and think, oh, man, I wish I'd learned my lesson. And we cry out to God, and God so graciously loves us. He does help us. It brings us back into the fold. Now, we've got a new member of our family, this little Yorkie that we have. And I think now finally things are beginning to straighten out a little bit. But, you know, she's a puppy, and she has to learn. And so, but she has her own mind. And so we were teaching her that, you know, you don't run away from us. When we call you, you come to us because when we would call her, she would run away. And the thing is that there's traffic in the streets and cars and a car can run over the puppy and she not realized she's in more danger when she runs away than when she stays with us as her master. 
And so she got in the habit here of when uh, we would let her outside, she found that there were little places around in the fence area where she can get through and she would take off and go down the alley. And she did this a couple times and one time our neighbor behind us found her and brought her back and thank God that she did. There's another time not long ago where she took off, got through a little hole in the fence, trying, always trying to figure out how to get away from the master. Always trying to figure out how to go outside the boundaries. And she took off. Man, I went out there and I'm hauling for her. And I'm asking, I'm, man, I'm, I'm, I'm calling her name out there. And this, this guy comes around the corner. I never saw him before in my life. He's holding her in his arms. And he says, is this your dog? And I said, yes, she is. And I, he gave back to us. And I was so very thankful. But this time, this dog learned its lesson. And I made sure of it. I made sure she learned this time. You know, God chastens us for our safety, for our benefit. We're always trying to figure out how to get away with something, how to sneak through that little hole in the fence so we can go do our own thing and still make it to heaven. And God says, listen, you're only causing yourself more problems, more grief, more trouble, when the best place, the safest place you can be is in my presence. The sheep, instead of running away from the shepherd, ought to run to the shepherd and thank God for the shepherd that loves you and cares about you, provides for you, takes care of you, leads and guides you every step. Amen. And so now this new puppy, a new member of our family, has a new understanding. She does. And I can tell at times when I call her, this is what she does. At first... She takes a step the other direction, then she stops. And I think somehow it comes back to remembrance what happened last time she did that. And so then she comes and she kind of huddles down and, you know, humility, right? It's a false humility, but she does it. She comes. <laughs> and I pick her up, you know. But that's the safest place to be. I'm going to take care of you there. And I'm going to love you there. And I think God calls us, and you have a choice. Sometimes we run from the call. Sometimes we run from God. Sometimes we run from the shepherd. And we say, no, I don't have time to spend with you. I don't have time to be in the Word. I don't have time to pray. I don't have the time to be in your presence. And God says, listen, that's the best place you can be is in my presence. Because I'm going to nourish you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to give you a word of wisdom. I'm going to comfort you. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to bless you. You've got a shepherd that loves you so much that he's willing to leave the 99 to find the one that went astray. That's how much he loves you. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God that he loves you. Praise God. Hallelujah. He loves us more than we'll probably ever love him. But he loves us so much more. This is a beautiful psalm. It's a psalm of comfort. God provides. When you have Jesus, we don't lack anything. You don't lack anything. You know, you don't might not have all the things or the temporary things of life that it has to provide for you. But, you know, that's not, those things aren't long-lasting. Those don't have an eternal effect. But when you have him, you have eternity. You have eternity. I pray that we all get out of here together in the rapture. I pray. But if we have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I look at the graveyards and maybe I'm a little weird. Maybe I'm a little crazy. But I look at those graveyards and I think about all those people that have passed through the valley of the shadow of death. They've gone on before us. All those famous people in the past and all those famous movie stars and famous presidents, whatever they might be, famous people, they've all had to pass through it. But I tell you, my beloved, if we're going to all have to pass through it, I'd rather pass through it holding the hand of my shepherd than not holding the hand of my shepherd. And I see in the Word, He'll be there with you. He'll be right beside you. He'll guide you. He'll comfort you. And by His grace, He'll bring you through. And as Paul said, when you close your eyes down here, you'll open your eyes in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet and let's praise him tonight. Thank you, Sister Laura Lee. Thank you for ministering that word. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
You're so wonderful, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory tonight, God. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Praise him. Almighty God, we love you. We worship you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the promises of the word of God. Thank you that you're with us, Lord God, that we as your sheep, God, you're the good shepherd, the great shepherd, that love your sheep, that provide. I thank you, God. Let us run into your presence. Let us come near you, oh God, I pray. Oh, Jesus, we love you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, God, I'm asking, Lord, that you would be with the body of Christ tonight. Strengthen them. Give them that word of wisdom and word of encouragement. Speak to their hearts, oh God, that you are the one that leads and guides our every step. That, God, that you have a perfect plan. I don't want to run away from it, but I want to run to it because you know what's best. God, I thank you for outpouring love. And I pray that we would have such a devotion toward you. I pray that we as your sheep would want to spend time in your very presence, God. So God, I thank you, Lord, and we praise you this night. Thank you for this glorious day that you've given us as a body of Christ, as a church, to be able to worship you together, to be able to pray together, to be able to hear the preaching and the teaching of the word of God together. God, these are great opportunities that we have. We don't want to miss these times, God. These are precious. So, God, I pray that, that your, she, their, your sheep, Lord, your children, would be refilled with your spirit. Lord, tomorrow morning that their light would shine, that they would be renewed and revived in God, that knowing that his last days, taking every opportunity to witness and to share our faith. Oh, God. I believe that you're stirring the hearts of people all over the world. I believe people are searching. I believe people are hungry. Lord, I pray that we as Christians give them the real thing, that we show them with our lifestyle, we show them with our testimony of who the living God is. God, I thank you, Lord. So God, we praise your holy name tonight, and we bless you, Lord. In Jesus, Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name, we pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Would you all mind singing that song? Is that okay? Can you sing that? Just worship the Lord. Praise God. Officially, you're dismissed. We have prayer meeting Tuesday night at 7. We have our midweek service at 7. We have Zoomers this week at 6, Thursday night. But we're just going to spend some time worshiping the Lord. You're more than welcome to stay and worship with us. If you have to go, that's fine. But just praise Him. Hallelujah.
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when Darkness, my 
praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Give God a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just blessed by his presence. Praise God. Amen. God, you're so, so good to us. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's so good. His glory, his presence. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Come unto me, you that are weary and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. A lot of weary people today, people discouraged and people that are worn and tired, but God will renew you spiritually and he will strengthen you and revive your faith. But you got to go to the shepherd, the presence of God to the Lord. Hallelujah. God is looking for a people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. I believe God looks upon the face of the earth and looks for his church that will cry out to him, that will pray, that will worship, that will seek his face. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's come back to Jesus. Come back to the shepherd. Come back to the one that will protect and guide that will provide, that will help us in our time and need. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come with a true heart. Come with a clean heart and clean hands. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister, I believe that you were going to share something here tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we probably all know that. And I was thinking about drawing closer to the Lord and, and having that secret time of prayer. I've shared with Pastor, I now made one of my closets into a prayer closet, and it's wonderful. But we get so busy, 
things come into our lives, every life, even people that are, are not own businesses. We're busy. But my mom taught me a long, 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 long time ago about tithing. And she says, sweetheart, pay your tithe first. She says, because you'll never miss it. And it's true. Now what I want to say about drawing close to the Lord, give him your private time. Give him the first fruits. Give him the first time in the morning. Set him first. You'll never miss the time. You'll, it will not come out of your schedule. I'm telling you, it won't come out of your schedule. If you put him first, it may be five minutes, it may be 20, it may be a couple of hours. But whatever you give him, he'll so much more give you back. And it multiplied upon multiple. He, he does. He does. And, and it, it, it has, these messages have spurned me. I, I, I want more. I want more. I want to be closer to him. I want to be ready when I come through that door to worship. You, you, you can't just come in on the fly and expect to get it all. So just give give it to him first and he'll you won't miss it. You won't miss it. Praise God. Thank you, sister. He'll stretch stretch that hour and make it 2 hours if you need it. If you put him first, amen. Praise God. Thank you. Folks, I love you. Appreciate every one of you and I pray that you just have a just a fabulous week. I pray that you just sense his presence, the nearness of God. And that he just is speaking to your heart each day. And I just I just praise God for what he's doing. I appreciate you coming, that are able to come here on Sunday night. I appreciate that. God bless every one of you. Have a great week. And I hope that you can make it Tuesday night for prayer, corporate prayer. And uh, if not, maybe you can make it Wednesday night. Love to see you here, okay? God bless you. Have a wonderful week. In Jesus' name.